Welcome back to the Horror Academic, and for my first review for this week, we have Mondo Cannibal. Okay, so real brief, uh, two, okay, three main categories of Italian horror of the 70s and 80s, dominantly, and 90s, are the giallo, which are like thrillers, the zombie, everything kind of post Dawn of the Dead that was made in Italy, and the cannibal film, which is a fairly Italian category, um, and it's this kind of after zombie films. How could we up the ante and bring on the gore more, right? So that's how that's where we get cannibal films from. So I picked up Mondo Cannibal um, under this theory of okay, well this is gotta be just one that I missed of the cannibal films of you know like Umberto Lenzi, Roger Diodato. Um, that's like make them die slowly and cannibal holocaust which are kind of the staples there's a bunch of other ones like man of green river and um cannibal man which actually wait, that might be the same film there's a lot of okay so this is the italian thing where there's like everything has 500 titles because a if it didn't do well in the first run let's just throw a different title on it and put it out again and see if people come for this one which is a, a weird thing that i guess all exploitation and, and like schlock movies do and then there's the whole thing where Here's the title. It doesn't really make sense in this other country, so let's change the name to make more sense in this country. And then by the time it goes to a different country, we have both names, and it gets a little confusing, I'm not going to lie. So, Italian films in general, that's where we go. Now this one, I'm thinking this has to be like a lost one from the 80s or 90s that I missed, right? Um, so, and it looks like it, and the footage looks like it, and it's got the name Bruno Mattai, who also goes by the name Vincent Dawn. Okay, so I know those all sounded familiar. I had to refresh my memory why. So Bruno Mattai, who also goes by uh, Vincent Dawn, created um, Night of Zombies, Rats. Um, he basically, under all these different pseudonyms, made everything from zombie films and gore films and you know, cannibal films, and nunsploitation, and Nazi exploitation and women in prison movies, and every genre you can think of that was schlocky he made. Um, this one, I think, also went by the name Cannibal World, which kind of makes a little bit more sense, to be honest. Um, so, I'm watching it, and I'm like, this looks like it's 83, and then I'm like, well, maybe 93, because there's some definite digital effects of, like, superimposing images on blank screens. I'm like, he couldn't really do that well to the 90s. And then I'm like, really? Like, is this a 90s movie? And I'm looking it up, I'm looking it up, like, no, 2003, people, 2003. Does not look like 2000, anything. This looks like late 80s, early 90s, and I'm sticking to that. Okay, let's get really to the nuts of the movie. This is, in some places, it was marketed as the prequel to Cannibal Holocaust unofficial prequel to Cannibal Holocaust. I think that's where the Cannibal World name came from. Uh, but they very obviously are using the same font and colors as, you know, Holocaust. And it's the story of these two, well, this one re reporter talent TV presenter chick who's getting canned and she's got to find a new gig. And she sees that this guy she used to work with is doing this thing about cannibals. And she's like, I'm going to jump on that. So she reaches out to him and he's like, well, come on, let's go find another place because that documentary you just did was getting some good ratings, so let's do another one just like that. And they convince the sleazy TV execs to, to, you know, foot the bill, send them out there with a couple camera people and an audio guy. And this all seems very typical. Um, but, you know, they get there and obviously it's the usual, uh, well, these, these natives aren't cannibals, so we got to you know, make them out to be worse on camera, and it's, it's a lot of what you see in Cannibal Holocaust poorly ripped off, uh, um, because I'm not, I mean, one day I will have to do a full Cannibal Holocaust episode, um, but I'm looking for a good Blu-ray edition that isn't just a copy of the good DVD edition I have, different story, different time, but anyway, so this is really, it's really just kind of taking everything that they did and just redoing it in, uh, modern television. But all their equipment, by the way, looks totally 90s and has somebody who worked as an intern in TV studios in the 90s. That's the type of stuff we had. I don't know, maybe it's just the Italian thing or the low budget thing. But anyway, so they're, they're creating atrocity, right? They're, they're making it out to be worse than it is. It's like literally lining up with something and being like, all right, put the camera this way and I'm going to act like something just happened kind of crap. And, you know, that worked really well in Cannibal Holocaust. <sighs> Here, it's like, okay, maybe if your acting wasn't so crap, 
I would get that you're trying to still make that point. But the, I mean, even when they're trying to act, and I mean trying, the dialogue is so laughable. I mean, it really feels like it was written by a high school kid. Um, just the things that come out of their mouth would never come out of an actual professional reporter's mouth. Even if it's like a schlock reporter, you'd have a little bit more couth in the way you said things. Didn't fly with me. Um, oh my God, things that annoyed the hell out of me. Cameraman in the woods, or, you know, in the, in the jungle. And you got two camera people, man and a woman. She's got more of like a handy cam. He's got more like the pro line. But he's holding the camera like this, I guess like this, the whole time. And But when they show the footage, it's perfectly straight. And it's like, no, that footage would look like this. And that drove me nuts. Um, it's also that issue. Um, and movies since the 80s and 90s have had this problem with me where they're going to show you the footage being shot. And then they're going to show you, like, hours later, the TV exec watching it in another country. Not possible. Even in 2003, not possible. It would have taken them all night to upload that footage in old internet. And not to just forget the fact that they're in the Amazon where there's no Wi-Fi. Or even landline. So, yeah. You gotta get past all this crap because this movie doesn't really rise above. Um... What it does really push the buttons on is for in the first five minutes, you're watching people watch the one of the documentaries that this guy made, and it's got literally footage of a woman who's pregnant, surrounded by natives, and she's an, you know she's native as well, and her stomach is split open to take out the baby, and then more atrocities from there. Um, it's a gore movie. It's Italian gore. It's a cannibal film. These are the types of images we expect. They did this within five minutes and then had like this half hour gap before there was more gore. And I think it was kind of those like, hey, come here. We're going to show you some gore. And then, okay, hold on the brakes. Now we're going to give you the crappy story of these two reporters and uh, this this cheesy studio exec guy. And um, it was like a lot all at once. And then, like I said, Horror storyline, and then let's pick up with the violence and the gore. Um, there's mention in, like, they're trying to make it line up, like, these could be the people who were in Cannibal Holocaust before Cannibal Holocaust by referencing things that they did in very vague fashion because they obviously don't have the permissions to do that. Um, so there's even something, well, well you kill, uh, you know, turtles uh, just to, you know, up your ratings live on camera, and that. That's what Cannibal Holocaust went to, you know, went to court for because they showed, um, you know, amongst other things, you know, PETA not approved imagery, right? Um, so they're, they're trying to ground it in that. Uh, and then they, for no reason at all, I mean, it made sense in the storyline, but they didn't have to do it this way. They show their tour, their, their, their native guide, um, you know, killing a, a baby crocodile and skinning it you know, in front of the cameras, and you're like, okay, so you referenced that just to say that you're going to do more of the same? Um, I don't know if by 2003 we hadn't figured out that that was a bad idea. So, uh, if you're, if, there, I mean, there's plenty of people out there who are fans of gory films, but not fans of real horror being done to animals, avoid this film, um, because that wasn't necessary. None of it's nearly necessary, um, but I'm going to go all the way back to Apocalypse Now, set that bar. So, again, a story for another time. Getting back to this movie. Um, what do I want to tell you about this? Uh, yeah, so I'm trying, I was trying to figure out through the whole thing when I was talking about this idea that it was made in 2003, but it looks like the 80s or the 90s. Is that a style choice or is that a budget restriction? Not sure. Um... Yeah, it's a blatant ripoff of Cannibal Holocaust. Gore five minutes in. Uh, uh, there's all this kind of unnecessary things, like unnecessary nudity. Um, like, we're going to have the reporter and the female camerawoman uh, sunbathing naked. Okay, why? Um, just so they can kind of toy with the their guide who obviously has um is attracted to them not necessary um it, there's this thing that happens in the middle that they don't really even play through where 
they're trying to track the natives. They're trying to find the cannibals. They're following the regular natives to find the cannibals. And then all of a sudden when they find the cannibals or the expected cannibals, this military group comes out and starts shooting up all the natives. And they're like, well, we're here. The government sent us here to clear out these, to, you know, to clear out the cannibals to save the, the, the peaceful tribes. And it's like, okay, well that happened for like two scenes and then those guys went away. Um, were you trying to say that this was a thing or I don't know that didn't work, whatever I'm saying. Anyway, so all of this to say they eventually are among the actual cannibals and the, you know, but there's not enough is happening. It's not exciting enough for the cameras. So they, they stage a massacre just like in cannibal Holocaust. Um, and then they kind of get their just desserts. They get, they end up getting captured. The, um, the cameraman who's filming all this, um, you wonder how do we get that footage if they're all victims in the end? Uh, there's some lame excuse about how some freedom fighters or whatever found it and mailed it to the, I don't know. That's weak. Um, especially because the time frame thing again, like they have that footage the next day. And then they, here's a, an actual factual spoiler. So I, I get it if you actually want to watch this and tune out. The, um, they, in the end, the uh, execs decide, well, we can't let the public know that they, they've been killed because they're not going to tune in anymore. So we got to keep it going. And, and they pretend that they're, you know, arrives home safely, but without any footage or photos and that more is to come. And it's like, what's more to come? You've already shown the footage that they shot. There's nothing left. You're not going to find more footage. So that plot device, I don't think made any sense to me. Um, there's this one scene where the boardroom of guy and they're all like debating, like, we got to stop. This isn't right. We should, there's one guy who's like, it's not right for us to show these atrocities and this is awful and we should get them out of there. And, and everybody else is like, but the ratings are great, you know? And he's, you know, so this, the one exec storms off and turns around to them before he leaves. And he goes, you know, who are the real cannibals after all, or something like that. And you're like, eh, I don't know if that sentence makes sense. Mm. I don't know. They're trying something for a minute and it didn't, didn't pan out, which is kind of the story of the story. They tried a lot of things that didn't pan out. They, they, um, they essentially, uh, remade Cannibal Holocaust is what they did. So in summary, Mondo Cannibal, um, don't get confused like I did. This is not a movie that you missed. This is a movie that only came out in the past 10 years. Um, Nothing to write home about, nothing new, kind of reiterates stuff that's all been done before. Um, <clears throat> does not prove that if you call him Vincent Dawn or Bruno Matai, is he any better? Um, I mean, if you love cannibal films and have to be a completist about them, sure, pick it up. But know that you're not going to get anything extraordinary. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd give this like a 3. You know, they don't really bring anything new to the table. Production values are pretty crappy. Um, it just reiterates old stuff. But it is what it is. So that's it for Mundo Cannibal.